Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is currently, I think it's like quarter till seven. Listen, I have to tell you that the other, I just have to tell you, I can't even speak. I have filmed so far today, I think like six videos. I always wait till the very end to do my vlog. Um, Cause it's just, it's, I cannot speak. What is wrong with me? I think it's because I have like, I always videos, but I always wait till the very end to film my vlog. Um, because it's kind of a nice way for me just to kind of unwind and relax, you know, as I'm finishing up my videos and stuff like that. I have filmed today a drama video, a review video, a Peter Does Stuff video, two videos for my reality show channel, and I was going to do a Peterisms video, uh, but I didn't get to that, and I was going to do a booktube video, but I didn't get to that. So, um, what I, this is like my sixth or seventh video that I filmed for the day. And I actually got up very late because I stayed up late, late, late last night. So, um, for those of you that didn't see my post that I put on the community tab, I'm trying to get like all comfy. <laughs> you must see all comfy. This is this is all comfy. So, um, for those of you that didn't see the post that I put on the community tab or on um, the Vlogarinos group, if I don't announce it, like the other day I announced like days in advance I was taking Sunday off, so I didn't feel like I needed to put that in the Vlogarinos group or on my community tab because I'd said it in so many vlogs. But if I just like at the last minute decide that I'm not going to vlog, I usually put it up in the Vlogarinos group and also in my community tab for the vlog so you guys can look there if you're like, well, where's Peter's vlog and whatever. Um, so Alex had gotten home and he was like relaxing inside and stuff and it had kind of been like overcast most of the day and it was supposed to be raining but it hadn't really started raining yet. And then I was inside like uploading some videos and stuff and I was literally, I had the camera on the tripod and I was getting ready to come out here and it, all of a sudden it just got like really dark. We have, so we have huge windows in our living room that go like all the way up to the ceiling and it was just like all of a sudden it just got really dark in the room and Alex came um, in from the backyard because he had taken Boo Radley out and he said, I'm so proud of Boo Radley like he uh, did his business in the rain and I go, is it raining out there? And he goes, not hard. Well then I was like sitting at the computer and... Alex like sat on the couch and was like looking at his phone and stuff and all of a sudden we were just kind of talking and all of a sudden I heard like thunder and I said is it raining and then all of a sudden I heard like you know how you can hear like really heavy rain and Alex like looked on the weather and he said yeah it's like forecasted like really heavy winds so I come into the kitchen and I look out the window and it's like the tree in the front yard is literally like blowing from side to side it's like such I mean I, five minutes before that when I was coming out here to vlog it was like completely nothing right and then it just was like torrential downpours and it was like blowing wind and my friend Valerie texted me today, girl, you are trying to be so rude. <laughs> She's like, you didn't vlog last night because it was raining. She goes, it literally rained for like five minutes. No, I don't know. It's, I had to take all of my cushions off so I could watch um, shows out here later that night. I had to take all these cushions off. I had to put them behind here so they wouldn't get wet. The entire front porch, including the table and everything, was completely soaked. So I don't know what she's talking about. I don't know where she was. There was no rain, but it was like horrible rain here. And it was, it went on for a while. Um, I mean, at least like a half an hour, 40 minutes. It was like really powerful rain. It's raining right now. I don't know if you guys can see, but it's like really wet outside. I mean, it's not like pouring down rain right now, but it's wet. But it's been kind of like a night. These are days that I, I don't mind these days. Like I look, kind of like these fall days where it's rainy and leaves are falling and you can smell people's like fireplaces burning in the distance and stuff. Which by the way, I need to get a uh, a chimney sweep out here. I had an Uber driver and he was talking about his day job and I said, "What's your day job?" And he said, "I'm a chimney sweep." And I said, "Oh, I need to get one of those." He goes, "Well, you need to call soon because people start calling left and right or all the time. So you need to get in there if you want to get him to come soon because." I, we haven't had, remember I said like three years ago I was going to get chimney sweep and we just never did. So we haven't used our fireplace. So we have a wood burning fireplace. My mom used to burn fires in it all the time. I grew up having like, my dad has like four or five fireplaces in his house. They have one in their bedroom. My dad and my stepmom love fires. I grew up with, my mom loved having fires in the fireplace. So I grew up with having like lots of fires and we used to use the fireplace here all the time. Well, a couple years ago, it's either because they sealed the top of it off when they painted the condos, which would have been now it's like six or seven years. 
um, or there is like a dead animal stuck inside because the last time that I tried to light a fire, which was years ago, I remember talking in the vlog about I needed to hire a chimney sweep and then I never did and it's literally been like three years since I said that. As every fall comes, I'm just like lazy about it and I don't do it. So we just put like candles in the fireplace so it looks pretty, but we don't have fires. But I want to have fires this winter and fall. So I've got to hire a chimney sweep um, to come out here and do that. So I have coffee from earlier and I also have this Diet Coke that I opened um, during my, uh, I don't have a paper towel. All I have is this thing to clean my glasses with, which needs to be cleaned anyway. So I think I'm just going to use this and then wash this because I think this needs to be washed. You see how this is like sweating so bad? So yeah, so I didn't vlog last night. And in all honesty, I was really tired last night anyway. So it was kind of a good thing. And um, cause it would have been a really, really short vlog. And so I, um, after that, Alex went upstairs and took Boo Rally up there. We fed him and stuff and Boo Rally, he's been like so finicky. Like he'll eat a little bit here, but then he'll like run upstairs. He's not sick or anything, he's doing really, really well. But he just acts so weird. I have all these candles out here. So anyway, we went upstairs and then I said to Alex, I said, I'm gonna lay down for, he was going to bed for the night. He went to bed really early last night. And I said, I'm gonna go to bed for a little bit and take a little bit of a nap and then I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna watch my shows because I wanted to watch Below Deck Mediterranean that came out on Monday. I wanted to watch Invasion that came out at midnight. A lot of people asked me to watch Dancing with the Stars. That show, I did a whole review over on my reality channel, so if you're Dancing with the Stars people, do not be offended by what I said, but that is one of the corniest shows I've ever seen in my entire life. I don't know if I'm gonna continue watching it. It just was stupid, it was corny. Like, my stepmom loves that show, and God love her. Like, I'm glad that she has something that she enjoys, but she loves all these dancing shows. Um, and I have friends of mine, like, Tanya loves Dancing with the Stars and stuff like that. I'm like, this is so stupid. Like, this is, it's literally a popularity contest where people, like, vote in, like, text and get online to vote. It's just who's about who's popular. It's not about who's a good dancer. <clears throat> and I know people are going to be like, no, it really is about who's a good dancer. It's a popularity contest. Period. In the story. So, um... But I wanted to watch, what did I watch last night? Oh, I, I watched Below Deck Mediterranean. Oh my God, this season is so good. I'm gonna do my review on that tomorrow. And then I, but I'm like already in love with this new season and the, the, the crewmates and all that kind of the crew. Um, so I'm gonna, I don't even think I have that on my list of videos. Maybe I do. I have like seven videos. Well now five videos. Well actually I combined two videos in one and I did my um, review of Real Housewives of Orange County which the finale is on tonight and the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. I put that into one video. So I have two, two videos going today. That one and the Dance with the Stars. That one's uploading right now. So I will uh, get those videos done when I get inside. But yeah, I watched Below Deck Mediterranean and then I came out here and then I watched Dancing with the Stars. I feel like I watched something else right after that. Dancing with the Stars was an hour and 45 minutes, you guys. Oh no, it was not, because I slept from like, I slept from like 10.30 until 2, like 2.15, 2.30 in the morning. I woke up and I was like awake. Because I was like, just sleep through the night. I was like, I couldn't go to sleep right now if I wanted to. I was like awake. Alex and I last night, we watched Real Housewives of New York, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, because it was on last night. Real Housewives of New York was on Sunday. So we watched those two, and then we went to bed. He went to bed about, maybe I went to bed at like 10.30. Maybe it was a lot earlier than that. I can't remember, but I laid down. I think it was like 10.30, 11.30, 11.30. .30. Yeah, I think I slept like four hours, because I woke up and I was awake. And it wasn't raining, and it was funny, because like right now it's raining, it's getting a little heavier, and it's cooler as it rains. But last night I came out here and I thought I was going to have to put my coat and my boots on and stuff. And it was actually pretty warm. So, um, and tomorrow, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm getting major dental work done. I'm getting this crown done. And they think that it's not going to go on. They're going to have to build it up. So I may be there for a while. And I'm not going to get up early to make the videos. So I may take another day off tomorrow. Just giving you guys full warning. I'm not, it's not me being lazy. Because I'm filming as many videos as I can on the days that I can work. And I'll be back Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Um, for the rest of the week, but obviously, <clears throat> if I come home tomorrow from this dental appointment, Alex is so sweet, he's trying to get off work early, he's going to take me to the dental appointment, he's going to come over home and pick me up, and he's going to drop me off and go back to work and finish some things, and he's like, if I can get off work early enough to come and pick you up, my appointment's at like 2 o'clock, and he, he, uh, 
Uh, so he was like, what time do you think they'll be done? So they, they said they'd be done like an hour and a half. So he's like, if I can get done by like 3.30 or 4, I can come pick you up. That way you don't have to take an Uber and stuff. And I was like, okay. I think because of all my dental stuff, he's like a little worried that I'm going to be like worse off than I am. But everybody says the crown doesn't hurt. So I'm not real worried about it. But anyway, so um, you know what I just realized? So I've been trying to set up this appointment with my doctor. And I called early yesterday and I left a message because I was having such a hard time getting all this stuff situated. So I left a message with his assistant early yesterday when I was with Caroline. Well, that right when I got, so it would have been about, she picked me up at 2.30, so it would have been about 2.30. About not being able to sleep again. They just are not great about calling me back. So I'm gonna have to call them back again tomorrow because I didn't hear from them today and their office is already closed. For scheduling an appointment or getting, or the sleep situation. Whatever, I'll have to call again tomorrow. Um, I mean, do you think it's rude to call every single day until they call you back? I mean, it's not been like, Separate calls of asking about the same thing with no return phone call. Do you think that's kind of rude? Anyway, I, um... All these planes always going overhead. I always wonder where they're going. They're going up, so I can tell that they're not landing. Unless I don't know anything about planes, and I don't. <laughs> so they might be circling and then landing, I don't know. The direction that they're going in is towards the airport that I think, though. It's not, because, like, the airport is south. It's in Plainfield. It's not, like, that way. That's north. So, yeah. But anyway, I got up last night. I watched uh, Below Deck Mediterranean. And then I watched Dancing with the Stars. I will say this. Like, Dancing with the Stars is incredibly corny. But it's, like, a good family show. Like, you know, for you and your kids to watch and sit down. I think, you know, it's a cute family show to watch. Um... I just was like kind of wanting Housewives to fight. Like I was in the mood to watch Miami. I wasn't really in the mood to watch it, but I said I would watch it. I'm trying to give all these shows like at least one or two episodes as a trial. And then if I can't continue to watch it, I won't. I don't think I'll continue to cover that. I don't see myself following a whole season of it, especially at two hours an episode. If it is every week, I can't be doing that. Um, and, and then I finished the night watching Welcome to Plathville. They are trying so hard to keep the season going. I mean, like, it's like, why are... Okay, everybody is literally moving everywhere. Mariah lives in Tampa. The parents are divorced or getting divorced. I don't know if their divorce is final yet or not. They said it on the show. I just to be honest with you, I'm so bored of it. And uh, the mom lives in the apartment. The dad lives in the house. They're selling the house. That's going to be in the next episode. They're selling the house. Um, Micah lives in Los Angeles. Ethan and Olivia are moving to Minnesota from Tampa. Like, they're none of them even in the same town anymore. The parents aren't married. The, there's no focus on the other kids at the, except for Lindsay and Erica. And so, it's like, why are you keeping this show going? Like, you guys are trying so hard to keep this show going. This is like when Glee, when they all went to college. It's like, you just needed to end the show after high school. Like, the show did not need to go on, right? It's like, just no one to end a show. Like, as much as I was sad when Shit's Creek ended, um... I think it was smart of them to end it on an up note, you know, not a down note. Like, it's just like, in the show, okay? Like, I know that you people, like, your only sole income is the reality show Welcome to Plathville. Like, they're talking about, like, this kid and he buys a plane. And I'm like, he doesn't even have a job. How is he buying a plane? Oh, because of the money that he makes off of Welcome to Plathville? Like, that's why you guys don't want to give up the show. Well, the show is boring, okay? The show got started off the fact that you were this ultra-conservative Christian family, okay, that wouldn't even let your kids watch reality TV, and now you're divorced, okay, and you don't even live by your own belief systems, you don't even get along with your own kids, it's just, it's so bizarre to me, like, like, all of these ultra-conservative families, and I, I will not compare them to the Duggars, because they are not on any level like the Duggars, although I think... I used to think that the dad was just straight up weird. Like, in all honesty, like, I don't know. I just thought he was weird, you know? He always did this, like, weird laugh and smile. Not the Duggars. I don't watch the Duggars. The Plath. The Plath dad. 
But like this season, like I just think that's his personality and his character. I think he's lived kind of a sheltered life. I, I'm probably making excuses for somebody I don't need to, but anyway. I just think he's kind of like antisocial, not antisocial like the diagnosis, but I just think he's like, I think he's a, like has social anxiety like me. I don't think he really knows how to interact with people. I think that's why it comes, he comes across as a little weird sometimes. I think he's really trying hard this season. It's so obvious that he and his wife shh, don't belong together and that they're literally baby making machines. Um, the mom seems much happier. The dad seems much happier. They just have like this weight off their shoulders. <clears throat> but yet they still talk about all this like, like the mom's like, <clears throat> well I knew that the church was going to come against me because, you know, like we got divorced and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, why would you, why would you be part of a religious organization that judges you harshly for the choices that you make in your life that you don't feel like you can live your life because I, to me, like I would not be part of that. If you felt like you needed to do that. And they seem much happier. Like, they were basically living a lie. Like, Micah, at one point, is, like, he's talking to his mom. And, like, they they flash to, like, the confessional area. And he's, like, so... He's, like, so confused about it. Like, he's, like, so... Because everything that they preach to their kids, like, they don't live by. And he's, like, so you guys were, like, living a lie all this time and we didn't even know it? I'm, like, yeah, basically that's what your parents were doing. You know, it's, like, it's, it's screwed these kids up. You know? And the thing is about, like, Ethan and Olivia, and I'm like, I will tell you, I have not watched, like, the last season and a half. I always kind of tend to want to side with Olivia. Even though I think she's a shit stirrer, too. I think she's just doing her best to keep her marriage alive. I think Ethan is in an incredibly difficult situation between his, 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 you know, um, what do you call it? His, his I can't think of the name for it. His family of birth, you know, and then his family with um, Olivia. Like, I feel so blessed that, like, my dad and my stepmom and my cousin love Alex. And they, I mean, my mother in law and Alex's cousin Maya and stuff, all the, they all come over to Caroline's house for holidays and back and forth and do stuff. They all love each other. My dad and my stepmom love my dad, or love, <laughs> love my dad, love Alex's mom and grandma and stuff like that, you know? So it's like, and my in-laws have just, like, taken me in. Like, my mother-in-law considers me another son, even though we're, like, ten years apart. You know, I mean, she's just... I feel so blessed to have the family that I do. Like, I cannot... And I know I have lots of family... Or I have lots of friends of mine whose families do not get along. Or there's, like, just, like, this, you know, this division between in-laws and things like that. I'm so blessed. Like, I always say I have the best mother-in-law in the world, and I absolutely 100% believe that. I really do. That's not to say we always get along. I think that one of the reasons why my mother and I, my mother-in-law and I get along so well is because she's never like minced words with me. You know, I always just say she's the best mother-in-law in the entire world, but let me tell you a little stories, okay? So we've always gotten along because I'm very protective of her, like incredibly protective of her and always worried about her, even though she's very independent and can take care of herself. But like, I remember like years ago, she wanted to write a book, so she wrote a book, right? But years ago, she asked me to come over and help her. This was a different book that she was going to write. She's very creative, always come up with ideas. So she wanted me to help her, like, figure out how to write this book, right? I showed up, and I was, like, 20 minutes late. And she was staying in the kitchen. And she very, like, sweetly said to me, she, she looked at her watch, she was like, you're 20 minutes late. And I said, I'm really sorry, like, you know, whatever. And she goes... That's fine. She was like, but just make sure that you don't do it again. She was like, because when you're late, she's like, what that says is that your time is more important than mine. And I moved my day around to meet with you and I wouldn't do that to you. Even though she's like an hour late to everything. <laughs> but I don't ever say that because she's my mother-in-law, right? But you know what? She was right. You know, she was right about that, about saying that to me. And, you know, things that she has said or done, and there's only been a few through the years that have, like, hurt my feelings. This is where people are going to go to her and they're going to say shit. Trust me, my mother-in-law have, like... Like, this is where I'm, like, in my head, I'm like, should I delete this part? Because then, you know, um, it will be taken out of context and people will try to contact her. Trust me, we have had this conversation so many times that it will be no surprise to her. You can take it right to her and you can shove it in her face. And she'll be like, yeah, Peter and I have talked about that a million times. Things that she's done or things that she's said just off the cuff that have hurt her feelings or things that I've said off the cuff that have hurt her feelings or whatever, 
we take to each other. We have those conversations. Like, she'll say to me, like, Peter, this really hurt that you said this. And I'll be like, oh my God, I didn't even realize it. I'm so sorry, you know? Or I'll say to her something like, you know, whatever, um, that hurt my feelings. And, uh, you know, and she'll be like, oh my God, Peter, like, you know, I love you like a son. Like, I didn't mean that. Like, we'll have those conversations. Our ability to be able to have those conversations with each other, adult conversations, have eliminated, I mean, and I can tell you, like, in the 15 years that I've been with my husband, there is probably, and I'm being completely honest about this, there's probably been, like, three or four incidents where we've come to the other person. But we have very deep conversations. She gets very deep, very spiritual. She's probably one of the only people in the family that I get real spiritual with because nobody else really wants to, you know? And she's a very religious woman, but she's a very spiritual woman. And so she and I will talk, she asks a lot about recovery, she asks a lot about the steps, she asks, I mean, she's very interested in it. And I just feel so blessed. She's the most amazing, most amazing mother-in-law in that I could have ever asked for. And the only thing that makes me really sad about it is that if my mother was still alive, because she's tall, like she's like 5'10", right? 5'9 or 5'10". And she likes, loves to have like sleepovers with her girlfriends where they like watch Mamma Mia and do face masks and dance in the living room and stuff like that. Like my mom would have loved her so much and she would have loved my mom. And I can just totally see how she would have like taken my mom under her wing and been like, okay, I'm picking you up and you're gonna sleep over here this weekend and we're gonna make dinner and do this. My mom would have loved it. Like they would have got along so well. It's like, I don't get sad often about my mom anymore, but like that's one of the things that makes me sad is that my mom would have loved Alex. She would have been like, teach me how to salsa, you know, or whatever. Do you think I look good in this sweater? And Alex would be like, no, take that sweater off. You know, like she would have loved his honesty. She would have loved everything about it. She would have just been like so just interested in the culture and she would have been asking a million questions and wanting to do the food and help cook and and dance. And my mom loved music and stuff. And I'm just, it makes me so sad that like Alex never got to meet my mom and and that his mom never got to meet my mom. I think they would have just loved each other. I think they would have been the best of friends, you know? Alex's mom would have been so good for my mom. She's so full of just love and spirit. She doesn't take anything for granted. She's one of the most grateful people I've ever met in my entire life. Um, as is his entire family, but she's just full of it. And I'm just so, so grateful to have her in my life. She's just an amazing human being. And, um, yeah. But I think you need to have those open conversations with people, you know? And not even just about things that, like, have upset us, but she'll come to me and she'll be like, do you think I, you know... Like, when she went, okay, well... I mean, this is just the truth. I don't have anything to hide. It's not even, like, that big of a deal. I'm, like, so protective of talking about my family and stuff on here. Caroline doesn't care, but other than that. So, you know, my brother-in-law, Fufu, is getting married to his fiance Jesse, here in a little while. And, um, so my mother-in-law went out there to visit them for, like, ten days this summer. And I said, you know, I said, you should take Jesse out to lunch, just the two of you. And I said, you should have a conversation with her and say, you know, like, Peter and I have such an amazing relationship because we come to each other and we talk about things. And if we're ever upset about something or we don't understand something, we go to the other person or Peter comes to me for advice or I go to him for advice and say, you want to have, because we have such an amazing relationship and say, I want to have the same relationship with you. And she had that conversation with her and she said it went really well. I just don't understand why there has to be infighting in families. I just, it, it makes me sad. I don't have siblings, so maybe that's part of why I don't understand it. But my husband gets along really, really well with both of his brothers. You know, I think sometimes we just have to sit down and have conversations with people. I've gone to my mother-in-law for so many things for advice, and she gives me amazing advice, you know? Doesn't mean I always take it, and she knows that. She's asked me for advice on stuff before, you know, and I don't know. I kind of, in a weird way, feel like my mom gave me Alex and his family, because she knew that I needed some place to, to fit, you know? And it's so bizarre because it's like this family that I never thought that I would fit in and now I feel like such an integral part of the family, you know? I always say Alex's family, but it's my family too, you know? Like when I say that, I'll be like, you're, well, I'll say something to Alex about like, well, your family, he'll be like, you mean your family too, you know? It's weird.
I think when you're an only child, you see the outside world differently than when you have, if you have siblings. I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but this is like one, like a language barrier thing that I think is kind of funny. So like if Alex is talking to his brother or like if Fufu is talking to Alex or if Carlos is talking to Alex or Carlos is talking to Fufu, like if they say like, like I would say, like if I was, if I had a sibling, I would say like our mom said this. They say my mom said this. Isn't that so cute? I always catch that. And whenever I say it to Alex, he's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, well, you always say like to Fufu, like my mom, like she's not his mom too. He was like, what's, I don't understand. And I'm like, you guys speak perfect English, okay? He's like, I don't understand what you're saying. I'm like, okay, like, like we'll be sitting there and Fufu will say, well, my mom called me last night. Like you guys don't have the same mom or something. It cracks me up. It's so cute. Anyway, I love my family. I think that was my biggest fear is when my mom died. I thought Caroline and I would drift apart. Not because of that, but I just thought you know, she got her husband and her, her son and they'll just drift apart. And you know, my dad was older and I mean, it's just my dad and my stepmom and I thought I would just won't, like, I don't know who I'll have, you know, it'll just be me out here. I really felt like that for a long time. I thought it'll just be me out here, you know, fending for myself and not really having any family. And I, I can remember thinking like, cause Tanya said to me at one point, she was like, I'll never let you spend Thanksgiving or Christmas alone. Caroline had said that to me too, you know? But there's a fine line between wanting to be invited to things and not be, wanting to be a burden. And I'm sure that there's some of you out there that are nodding your heads or like, oh, I so relate to that. You know, it's like, it's so nice when people invite you to do things, but at the same time, you don't want to be a burden and feel like well, they're asking you because they know that you're the poor, pathetic person that has nowhere else to go for Christmas, you know? But I kind of like, that was kind of part of my fear was like, if I never get in another relationship and I'm just on my own, like, where am I going to spend Christmas? We're going to, you know, like, what am I going to do for Thanksgiving or, you know, Halloween? I mean, I have a chili dinner for Halloween. I mean, I didn't know, you know? What am I gonna do for birthdays? I don't know, it just was weird to me, you know? And um, and I know there are people that, even though I consider my family very small, that have much smaller families than me, but that was one of my fears. And you know, I'm just like Alex's family, like my mom died um, that May, and then we started dating in August. And I can remember going to his mom's friend Halloween party like that October. I met his mom a couple times and his brother Fufu was still in high school at the time, so I met them a couple times and ate dinner over there, but the Halloween party, he was like, you need to dance with my mom. He like forced me to dance with his mom. I was like, I mean, she is a dancer. This whole family, I mean, like they like, every one of them dance like nobody's business, okay? And I'm not, I was, well, I am now, but I wasn't that person, right? Like I was so like self-conscious and whatever. And he was like, they're all in costumes at her friend's house and stuff like that. He's like, you need to go dance with my mom. And I was like, no. And he's like, go dance with my mom. So like, she's swinging me all around the dance floor and stuff like that. It was so fun, you know, Celia Cruz. Um, she always introduces me to music too. And she introduces me to like older music um, of people that she loved when she was younger, which reminds me of my mom and I love that as well. So she always plays like, um, like when she went to Argentina, she like made, she, I helped her make this like, uh, this video of all of her pictures and she wanted to put this music to the background of it. And um, and it was like this Argentinian artist that she really likes. And um, it was so funny because I was like in an Uber and he like, I can't remember who he is, but he looked like, he's like the, she said he's like the Frank Sinatra of Argentina. I know there was somebody out there that knows who I'm talking about. If I had my phone out here, I'd look it up because I have ton of his, tons of his music. But I was in an Uber and this guy was playing him and I, I knew it was him because I had the picture of him with like the fedora on and stuff like that, right? And I was like, oh my God, my mother-in-law loves loves a singer he was like your mother-in-law i was like yeah she's from venezuela and he was like oh he's like venezuela and all this kind of stuff and he was like um i was like where are you from and he was like colombia and he was like but this is like he's like a big like we love him like in south america and stuff like that so anyway um yeah music food dance <laughs> alcohol just interesting isn't it that as a sober person big things in the venezuelan culture I love my family. I feel so blessed to be part of their lives. And they just took me in, you know? I mean, I was at a point where I thought, <clears throat> I mean, I've told Alex this before. I think I fell in love with his family as much as I fell in love with him, you know? Not in a romantic sense, obviously, but like, 
just having all of that and that was all so attractive to me and that was a huge part of who he was as a person and um you know it's so funny because Tanya's always like who Alex presents himself to be is like like this person that's like so full of fa fashion he doesn't give a shit about stuff and he doesn't really care she's like stopped she's like but when you see him with his family and she's like he's so great with his nephews and he's like dancing in the kitchen with his mom and he's like talking to like his great aunts and he's like you know so careful go get somebody a plate you know and like he'll get out of his chair for you know he's like sits like he takes his grandma on dates it's 93 you know he they still go on a date once a month and like he's so caring and kind to his family you know and I think it's one of his greatest attributes. It's funny because when I first met Alex, or when I sent him a message on MySpace years ago, I said, I saw you out, and I think you are very good looking and you have kind eyes. And he said, thank, and I want to take you on a date. And he said, thank you so much. He's like, I'm not a kind person, and I'm still interested in my ex. And so when he, we messaged a couple times back and forth throughout that summer, but I thought I was moving to Colorado. And then to near my friend, because I was like Indianapolis or something, I had no family except for my dad and my stepmom, and they were like, move, like, do what makes you happy, you know? Caroline and I weren't talking on the phone every day like we do now. So there was like, my mom had passed away. I was like, there's no reason for me to stay here, you know? Tani thought she was moving to Florida. So then Alex reached out and texted me like in August. So our first date was August 25th. And so he reached out to me and he was like, hey, when are you going to take me on that day? And I said, are you over your ex? <laughs> but you know what's so funny is that he always wanted to be so tough on the outside and act so tough, you know? But he really is such a kind guy. I know, like, you guys don't see a lot of that in videos because I do Q&As and stuff. But just, like, right now, like... Like, he had taken Boo Radley out, and then I was like, I'm trying to get these videos up. Do you mind giving him a food? And then I was like, this is the food that he likes. And so he, like, opened the thing. It's like these little, all this food that I bought him, and Boo Radley likes the cheapest one. So he, like, put it on the floor. He's like, that smells good, Boo Radley. He, like, got down the floor with him. Then he, like, took him downstairs, and then Boo Radley ate. And then he came, Boo Radley just comes dashing up the stairs, right? He acts like he's two years old again. My neighbors were today, they're like, he is like running all over the street. Like he's acting like he's two years old again. I don't know what was wrong with him, but he feels much better now. I'm so happy. Oh my God, my prayers are so filled with that at night. You know what I say? You don't pray, or, pray for that kind of stuff, but I am, I'm so thankful. I'm like, God, I am so thankful that Boo Rally is healthy again, you know? But, um, but Alex came up there and his paws were wet. And so I said, can you lift him up on the bed? And he goes, his little paws are wet. He goes, I'm getting a towel right now to dry off his little paws for him. And then he dry, I could hear him. He was up there drying them off. And he was like, okay, Boo Radley, you're doing such a good job, Boo Radley. And then he got Boo Radley on the bed. And he goes, you are awfully excited, Boo Radley, today. He goes, what's going on? And he goes, look at you. And Boo Radley must have been on the bed, like, acting crazy or something. And he's just, my husband is so sweet. I feel like I worked so hard, like, I am fully aware that at times in my life I have been the toxic, chaotic, chaotic person to other people. I'm fully aware of that. I take full responsibility for that. That there was a lot of work that I needed to do on myself and maybe those people couldn't continue to be around me. I don't feel like I'm that person today. Um, I try to really not involve myself in things that don't have to do with me, you know, unless asked to or whatever, right? Um, just kind of try to stay sim keep it simple, stupid, you know, <laughs> the recovery saying. And just enjoy the small things in life. But I really, really worked hard. Like, I'm like, it's so funny because I'm like, in my head, I'm like dashing through like faces of people that I loved. I loved dearly, you know. Some of them far away, some of them still live in this town. But people I loved dearly. But were very, I mean, I'm talking probably five to ten people. That I was pretty close with over the course of 20 years, you know. And they just were, even taking my side and looking at my side, they still were just very toxic and brought a lot of chaos into my life. And it was hard, you know, because I love those people. I still love them to this day. If they needed me, I would be there for them. Some of them I talk to every once in a blue moon. 
Some of them I don't talk to at all. Some of them I see them when I run into them, I'm like, oh my god, it's so great to see you. I don't hate these people, right? Like, at all. I just cannot be involved in the toxicity and the chaos on a daily basis. It's so... It's just, it's so overwhelming to me. Like, it's like, you know, if I lived in the drama on my drama channel, it's just a lot for me, right? Like, people are like, Peter says he doesn't like chaos and toxicity, but he has a drama channel. It's a drama channel. I sit down here for a half an hour to an hour every day, and I talk about people that I have no contact with whatsoever, okay? It's a drama commentary channel. It's like if I had a job and I was on The View or The Talk or one of those shows, E! News or whatever, okay? It's, I can turn it off the camera and I'm done with it. It's different when it's like one of your close friends and, you know, like they're calling you five times, six times a day, seven times a day over something like, and you just feel so bad for them for what they're going through. I mean, I've had this for, I feel like, 20 years, you know? And I've been the person on the other end too calling my friends five and six times a day, you know? I think a really big wake-up call for me was a couple years ago. I mean, it's been like, God, I think it's been like seven or eight years now. So Tanya and Eric, her husband, they used to live next door to this couple when they lived in a small town in Indiana. This was right when she had Nick, her son. And the couple that lived next door to them became their like closest couple friend. Couple friends. Well... Yeah, this was like eight or nine, probably eight. This was like right before I started on YouTube. It was probably eight years ago. Um, I, sh I feel like she just posted something on Facebook the other day about it. it was the anniversary of his passing. So the husband got um, some kind of brain cancer. He was really, really, really sick for a long time. And so I remember this one day... And, like, Tiny was really involved in helping them out and taking care of them and stuff like that. And this one day, I was kind of going through it with somebody. And I called Tiny, like, two or three times that day. And, I, and, like, each time she answered the phone, I was like, can you believe this? Like, I cannot believe this is going on, blah, 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 whatever. Nothing to do. This was before I was even on YouTube. Um, and so, I just was really upset with, like, somebody in my life. And I kept on calling, and justifiably so, just so you know, but I kept on calling her. And it was petty. It was real petty. So we ended up getting a fountain pop that night, and I can remember I went on for like 15 or 20 minutes about it. I'll never forget this. And I was like, and I can't believe this, and can you believe he keeps on saying this, and blah, 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 whatever. And we pull up to, it was somebody that was lying, lying to somebody else about something about me, or something that I had said. And um, so... We pull up in front of the gas station, and we're, like, getting out of the car. We're, like, sitting there, and I said to Tanya, I said, enough about me, so what about you today? And she goes, what? And I go, what did you do? And she's been silent the whole time, right? And she, I could just tell she was really tired. And I said, what did you do today? And she said, well, today was not a great day for this couple. And she said he's, he's just really not doing great. The chemo's not working anymore. It's not doing well. And... She said, so I went over to their house, and um, I cleaned their whole house, and I went and rented them movies from the Red Box to watch, and I made them dinner, or ordered them pizza or something, so that they could just watch movies and relax, and I cleaned their house for them and everything like that, and I remember sitting there, and I was like, how selfish and self-centered you are to sit there and go on about your bullshit that's petty, your petty bullshit, when there is somebody out there dying, okay? And Tanya gets out of herself and goes over there and gives her a whole day to these people. That's who I want to be, right? That's who I'm working on being. And I'll never forget, I looked at Tanya and I said, how, how, do you, how do you know how to be that person? And she was like, that's what I was taught to do in recovery, to be of service, you know? She's like, it doesn't make me a great person. It just makes me, it means I showed up. And I think it was at that moment that I was like, you have the ability to be very toxic in other people's lives as well. Stop it. Stop it this second. Stop being selfish, self-centered. Be of service to other people. You know, I've always been taught in recovery, if you're dealing with shit yourself, the way to get out of it is by helping somebody else. That's what Tanya was taught. Tanya walks the walk. I'm trying to walk the walk. You know? And that, that I'm so proud to call her my, my family and my friends, you know? Like, I feel like... 
this is what I wanted to say. I didn't want to make this all about toxic people in my life and how I got rid of them and I was toxic and I mean we've all been toxic at times. Let's just be for real, right? What I wanted to say was, to close this on a positive note, that I feel very, very blessed today in my life that I may not have many people in my life, you know? My circle is very small. I talked about this on here the other day. But the people that I have in my life, I feel extremely blessed to have in my life. I would trust them with my entire life, you know? They would be, they would be there for me in a moment's notice. They tell me what I need to hear, not what I want to hear, and the same goes both ways for me with them. And that's my family, my in-laws, my husband, my best friend, my cousin, everybody, you know, my other friends. I just, I feel so blessed. Like I said, my circle's small, you know? But I think when I step outside of it and I, I quit feeling sorry for myself, what I can say is, instead of my life being so small that I'm blessed with those people that I have in my life today, that they are ride or die, you know? I'm, I'm extremely grateful for that, so. All right, I'm gonna get off here now because I gotta figure out what I'm doing for dinner. Alex went to brunch today uh, with his mom. They went to Cafe Patashu. Imagine that. So he's like, he's not hungry. So he goes, I'm not hungry, so I'm not going to get anything. I go, well, I'm kind of thinking about pizza because I've been thinking about pizza for the last couple nights. And he goes, oh, well, maybe some pizza. And I go, well, I'm going to get Donato's. He goes, no, thanks, son. <laughs> See, this is, where the, this is where it's like, hey, listen, I'll order you Papa John's. I'll order myself Donato's. We don't have to fight over it. You can be happy. I can be happy. We can all be happy, okay? It doesn't have to all come from one place. So anyway... So I gotta go figure out what I'm gonna do for dinner because he's going to bed early again. I have a dental appointment tomorrow and I'm gonna watch Survivor, An Amazing Race, and Invasion tonight. Um, there's one other show that I'm gonna watch tonight too. And then Bachelor in Paradise and The Golden pa Bachelor come out tomorrow, so. Yeah, so I'm gonna go in and get all these videos up. And um, like I said, tomorrow, depending on how I feel when I get back from my dentist appointment, because it'll be getting back late anyway, I may not make any videos. I may just say, I'm done for today. I'm not making any videos. I will put up something on the Vlogerinos group. Please understand that it's not me being lazy or whatever. It's just like, I'm not feeling great or I'm tired. I may come home and just need a nap. I don't know. So anyway, um, if I film anything tomorrow, it will be a vlog. So that will be the first thing that I'll be focused on. So just so you know. So if I, not, I decide not to film anything, um, I'll let you guys know in the Vlogerinos group or in the community tab. So anyway, um, oh, the thing I wanted to say at the very beginning of this, and my neighbor said to me the other day, is I was like, I feel like I can't get my stuff done in time anymore, and it's so crazy, right? And she goes, or it could be that the days are getting shorter and it's getting darker earlier. And I go, yeah, like, or I hadn't really thought of that. So anyway... Um, I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Wednesday. You've made it halfway through the week. And if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Be kinder to one another. Love one another a little bit more. Be kinder and love yourselves a little bit more because it all starts with you. I love you guys so much, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya.